welcome back to the Goldmark Gallery and another brand new exhibition for these last days of the summer. I'm here today, not in our gallery front room, but actually in our framing department, a little down the road. You might have seen glimpses of that in our previous films. It's got a beautiful new exhibition space at the front of it, and I'm here with Rhonda Brooks. Uh, we have a, an exhibition of Rhonda's uh, watercolour landscapes, local landscapes to you, Charnwood, the Rutland area. A few of Norfolk, and yes. there's Dav uh, Dorset as well, and uh, there's some Gloucestershire bits and okay. pieces as well. Rhonda, you have a long career in the arts, but it's recently that you've sort of uh, been able to focus on painting again. You actually told me a, a special story about where your watercolour paints came from. Yeah, my, my mother gave me the watercolour paints. My mother was a, a painter, as was my grandfather. Mm. And um, my mother had this idea that she and I would go out into a field together and paint together, uh, which could never happen uh, <laughs> for very obvious reasons. I was working full time, but I was also a um, um, tutor, regional tutor for the University of Birmingham, as well as teaching full time. Yeah. So there weren't many hours in the day left. <laughs> so that always became one of those talks that we would do one day. And she gave me a, a box of watercolour paints because she had the idea that watercolour would be my medium rather than what I was doing, which mm. was more on the textile side. Mm. And uh, after she died and I retired, I sat there and I opened my box of watercolours and uh, set off into doing watercolours. <laughs> So Miranda's been very kind enough to show us her magic box of paints. What I have in here are the, uh, the paints themselves, which um, my mum gave me. And um, what I did when I first started was to actually do a representation of the different colours in their order as washes and as a solid colour. If you can only really mix a watercolour paint a certain number of times before they go muddy. Mm. So I then add uh, violet and uh, Chinese white and titanium white. Um, titanium being much more opaque than the uh, Chinese white and uh, just gradually build the colours up. I thought it would be helpful just to see, I mean this is one that I'm working on and that's one that's finished and what I've done that's got about three layers on and I'm mm. now painting back in the individual brush strokes of the grasses just to build some depth yes. and a lot of it is done through negative shapes yes so you know, I've got some white that I'm retaining but I've also put some white back in but I'm also putting the dark in around them to yeah. pull them forward but trying to still retain the the track and what I'm trying to do is retain that but get that idea of the distance mm. and right in the distance you've got the um, uh, Blakeney point and so on going out to there then this is looking the other way and there's the, um, the far distance again. We've only just hinted at with uh, one of the creeks coming in. And then the, um, the different composition of the path mm. as a contrast there, but to try and get that idea that's going backwards into the um, incredible distance. And, um, yeah, and that's another one which is, once again, of the, the Norfolk with the dappled light coming in. Yeah. But um, they're all different seasons and stuff. Just trying to build up that... In I mean, maybe you can see the brush strokes there a bit more clearly mm. of um, how I've gone back to about there with much more painterly brush strokes. Yes. And here is much more of the washes coming in. They take, each one takes about a week, um, and the, for obvious reasons, they don't all work. And uh, some of them don't survive the kitchen sink either, you know, the, the, the washing <laughs> procedures to get them back again. Yeah. So they, they do take quite a long time to, to get them to work. It's, it, they're quite uh, textural if you feel them, and different sides of the paper for different um, um, paintings, so that the paint moves across the paper mm. in different ways. There's a lovely versatility you get from watercolour in that it's way. It's beautiful. Being able to take back and yeah. put back. And yeah. All, yeah. Yes, well, my mother was an oil painter, as was my grandfather, but he also did do some watercolours. Mm. But um, my mother, for obvious reasons, just worked in such a different way, and she was surrounded by paints and easel and all the rest of it. And I just love the fact I'm sitting there with a, a small box. It's all here. And I'm, I'm complete, yes. Watercolour is a, a medium that, that obviously has lots of ties to the British tradition, lots of, uh, sort of very famous British watercolourists. But you've been uh, working in a, in, a, in a very interesting way. There's, I've been looking around this exhibition and 
They're maybe not landscapes that people are entirely familiar with. There's a very kind of uncanny feel to them. They sort of, they're both familiar and unfamiliar. Do you spend time out right there in the location painting in front of you? I, I do drawings in front of me right. and I only ever paint places I know really well. Mm -hmm. So I've always walked them and I, I look incredibly closely. So I do um, drawings, studies, mm. sketches, um, photographs and so on. Mm. But the paces, I mean there's um, various ones of a, a particular farm near where I live in Charmwood, yeah. which uh, I walk nearly every day, at least twice, three times a week, you know, it's that sort of thing. But obviously during lockdown we've all done many more walks of yes, those sorts. So we've sort of explored them further, but everywhere is very, very familiar to me. I may not know the names very well of the places, mm. uh, especially in Rutland, because they're just beautiful places that I uh, adore but they're not necessarily ones that come with the right uh, map reference from me. But, yes. uh, yeah, and it's, uh, they're very much um, local things that I love, yeah. Could you tell us a little bit more about the process of what goes into these paintings? Because I think for a lot of people, watercolour is sort of quick, splashy, sketchy, but these are very uh, carefully layered works, take a long period of time to, to wait. Yes. Well, what I, I do, I mean, I'm standing next to one here, so if mm. I, I sort of look at that one, what it comes from is I'm doing everything in layers. So I'm, I'm putting down the first layer and then I'm putting another layer on top of that and then scratching through to the mm. first layer. And then the, that whole lot dries and they dry overnight and seep in and things like that. And quite often I then wash them mm -hmm. and then go back in again and, and put another layer on the top. And they're very um, much built up over time rather than being done very quickly. Yes. But it's a sort of stretching of the British landscape tradition, I yes. would say, because uh, if you actually went back to the first layer, you'd probably recognise it. Yes. It's just the layers on top that yeah. uh, make it more difficult to get. And then the brushes I use are very fine and very detailed, but they're also quite big ones. And I've got brushes this big as well as ones which are sort of that big and um, sable as well as um, synthetic. And then the build up of the paint is actually, sometimes I pull it through from the layer underneath, yes. but sometimes I then use inks and work back into them to pull out the negative shapes rather than the positive shapes. Because of course with watercolour you work from light to dark. Yes. And once you put on your dark, You've, you're in a mess, yeah. trying and to put it back again. That lightness of the paper as well, using that as to, to effect as well. Yeah, yeah. no, it's um, very nice paper, very, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very nice paper. It forgives, uh, especially washing, which yes. is a, a classic technique of watercolour, is they get it under the tap and give it a good old scrub and uh, have another go. Yes, you were saying uh, some of these end up in the kitchen sink. They that, certainly that do, works. they <laughs> certainly do, yes. Yes, with the pan scourer, just yeah. sort of giving it. <laughs> but it takes the uh, top surface off. And, yeah. uh, but I also use either side of the paper and things like that, depending on uh, you know, the, what I want to get out of it and things. So uh, there's been a lot of, lot of different experimenting has gone on. And throughout that, things have worked and others haven't. You know, it's, yeah. it's the classic. There's a lovely cast of lights to them. There's um, quite a few, we're seeing branches and trees in front of us, sometimes uh, hedgerows and, and things. They're not completely devoid of human presence, are they? There are occasional figures and also that suggestion of um, sort of fences and things, impositions on, on landscape. Yeah, and no, I was very keen to have the idea that the people are around, but I'm not that enthusiastic to have people in them. Yeah. And then there was the one which is actually called, I think it's Meeting at the Water's Edge, which was actually one on Rutland Water. Mm. And um, my husband has the habit of getting a magnifying glass and going really up close and uh, looking at them. And he said, there's some people here and there's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, they're not. And, and but he found them. And as soon as he found them, I could then see them. But I mean, they're only a quarter of an inch high. But yeah. uh, I don't think anybody else found them without him pointing them out. But. They do have, a lot of them have that feeling of, um, they're not the obvious vista. They're somewhere that you that you sort of catches your eye as you're walking. They've got that feeling of actually being there in the landscape rather than sort of going and setting up your easel as you. Oh as yeah, yes. You might imagine. Yeah. No, I'm a walker. I mean, the one um, I think it's called zigzag hedges, and what it, it was extraordinary because you've got this incredible dominant lines, and it's literally going up like a zigzag mm. to the trees which are slap bang in the middle at the top. And I mean, it's such a controlled landscape, yes. yet it's also, there's nobody in it. But trying to get the distance and the height 
Mm, I did that through much more detail at the front, mm. but also very, very slightly changed the tone of the colour yeah. as it went up. You mentioned at the start that you, you sort of mm. began in textiles and have come this way into, into paint. Are there things from those other aspects of your career, of your, from your past work in teaching, that, that have helped you with, with painting work, or is this a new chapter? So there's a similarity in subject matter, but the, the teaching side was um, in some ways overlapped, but in some ways didn't, because I worked with uh, children who had uh, sensory difficulties, yes. sort of vision and hearing, and so it's a very, very different perception of the world that mm. they were doing, and through that, I think I developed my um, descriptive powers mm. of how to talk with them and help them understand where they were and how to do things and so on, yes. because it was very much to do with enabling people to understand a different way of perceiving the world. Mm. Thank you for talking with us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this little film preview. It's a really fantastic exhibition. I really implore you, do try and come here, see it for yourself. These are works that really um, have a, a wonderful ethereal quality of light and beautiful detail. They deserve to be seen here in the exhibition space. This is an exhibition that's going to be ongoing until uh, mid-October, so plenty of time for you to come and see the paintings. If you're interested in the work that you've seen here today, you want to ask any more questions, do please get in touch via the normal details, and we hope to see you again here soon.